Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? It's Keeping It Real Fishing. I want to talk to you real briefly. Uh, who am I kidding? My videos are never brief. Um, I almost feel conflicted doing this. It's not like this is a secret bait by any means, talking about these Kitex swing impact fats. But I got to tell you, for 2012, this is my bait. I mean, this is my bait. I mean, if you ask somebody that question, like, if you couldn't pick only one lure, any lure, hard lure, soft lure, anything, you know, crankbait, spinnerbait, jig, blah, blah, blah. If I had to pick one bait, it would be this. I was so impressed by this this year. I got to tell you, this year, I kind of discovered these. I fished swim baits in the past. Nothing moved like this. Nothing caught fish like this. And it takes a lot to make me a believer because I'm just a natural skeptic. Um, yeah. <laughs> Particularly with fishing, because everybody's claiming the world. Um, these, no claims or anything, I just happened to see these. I don't see too many uh, JDM things, but there's one store here by us that carried this brand. Never saw them. Caught my eye. Did a quick, right there in the store, did a quick uh, YouTube and Google search. I saw some videos right there as I'm standing in front of the bait on the shelf. I see some YouTube videos on the way this is moving in the water. I was impressed. I'm also thinking to myself, and we know this, that just because we like the way it moves or we like the way it looks doesn't always mean that the fish are going to like it. But this to me just looks so freaking real in the water. I'd never seen a swim bait undulate and swim the way that it did. Um, and uh, you know, you, there's some others right now that are coming close to this so you may not, you may think, you know, what's the big deal? I see things like that. Well, there's some others that are close. But let me tell you, I bought these and from the day I bought them in the early spring, this has been it, man. This has been it. I'd say probably 80% of the fish that I caught this year, 80 to 90% of the fish I caught this year were on two baits. One is a Senko. I just couldn't get that off my, I mean, I'm not going to use other lures when that's what works. You know, did I want to put on crankbaits? I got some beautiful crankbaits. I got some beautiful spinnerbaits. I got all these lures that, you know, you want to catch them on different things, but you know what? I'm out there to catch fish. I'm not out there just to watch something move by in the water. Ooh, that bait looks great. I want to bring a fish at the end of my line. I want to catch a, a new personal best, and that comes by, you know, numbers. So the Senko stayed on because the Senko produced all year. The other thing I produced all year, spring, summer, fall, cloudy water, clear water, you know, overcast, sunny skies, you name it. This guy right here. So... It's, I almost feel like I'm letting the cat out of the bag, and I don't know. Um, but I'm just, I'm just so, so impressed by this lure. I mean, it's like I can't fish it and not do well on it. It's, it's, it's scary. So I just, I made a video reviewing these things once before. This is kind of just like a follow-up, and that should tell you how much I like these things. And uh, I'll just show you a couple of them again real fast here. Um, I just have them rigged the way I was using them during the year. Here, they, you know, this is a smaller size. I got some of the other ones over here too. These are 4.8s. These guys down here are 5.8s. Um, black. I mean, it just gets it right, man. Between the ribs, the density, the action, you know, what's soft should be soft, what's stiff should be stiff. Just, it's, uh, I don't know, I guess it looks kind of easy, right? Like anybody can make it, but the swimming in the, in the, in the water is perfect. And I'll just uh, set this in the other video. I'll show you on a different one, not the black one. Um, another small thing. There's a recessed portion there for the hook, and a recessed portion here. So that's where your point's going to lie, so you don't have to text pose it or anything. And then this one here gives the when this compresses, it can get even more the hook out because if this line thing or if this um little channel here wasn't cut out right now that this part of the metal, that part of the hook wouldn't be able to get in as far as it is. It would be hitting probably somewhere around like there. So you wouldn't have much exposure. But when you cut that out, and you know, you could do this in any of your baits. You don't have to have it done by the factory. Uh, I think when it's done by the factory, it's there's more structural integrity. Uh, I think when you do it yourself, maybe it's a bit more likely to rip when you get strikes. But anyway, when you have that cut out, now that hook can proceed that much further up into there and give you a lot more biting area. I use these weighted swim bait hooks. I really like the weighted ones. I started off the year using uh, 
unweighted hooks with a little peg on the front uh, or a little you know like a bullet weight on front real light I think like an eighth of an ounce just to give myself uh, you know a little bit of a nose or whatever but they spin they spin and I didn't like the way it looked in the water and I don't think the fish did either because once I started going to these weights here you know some with a keel to it and it just kept it upright you know this is a directional bait you can see that the top is flat and the tail goes down um, once it was always like that and that lateral line was always you know not spinning all around but where it was supposed to be I, I definitely was doing better when I started using the weighted hooks so um, yeah I've been using all kinds of brands of hooks I have Eagle Club, Mustad, um, Owners um, there's another one too I think Bass Magic or whatever I just like as long as there's a big offset here in comparison to you can actually see a difference there between these two so these are different brands you can see how much this one goes down so when that fish's mouth hits it, it's going to pop out that much further and a uh, quick comparison between the 4.8 and the 5.8 it's a much bigger lure here's something I don't like actually I thought this would be great these are the Kitek um, it says super weedless and they really are not at all it's a tungsten Call it a, like a rubber jig head or whatever. It looks really cool, and the uh, you know Kitek stuff and a lot of the JDM stuff. It's impeccable craftsmanship, like the skirts, the colors, you know the way they fit, fit it here towards this uh, this plate. But um, a couple things I don't like about this one: it just doesn't have the action you would think in the water. It's really streamlined, and it just doesn't look a whole lot different than the bait by itself. A little bit, but not too much. Using it as a jig. Um, you think, all right, well, it's going to flow out a little bit, but more as a jig. But I can't use it where I want it to. If there's any grass or any weeds or anything, this whole assembly here would always catch the grass. Always catch the grass. It was really a nuisance. And I found I just had a lot more success fishing the bait bare without these things. As a jig. You know, same application, fishing it as a jig. Just, just a bait by itself other thing I don't like about these is that the hook is a very low offset so when this compresses that's about it that's about all you're getting not very much at all and I guess a little bit the fish would probably be pushing this down a little bit but um just it's the offset's not wide enough for a bait that's called a swing impact fat for this fat body there's just not enough clearance here you know the protrusion of the hook here is going to equal the space right now between this part of the shank and the body of the lure so you know that versus this you know it just stands to reason you want that wide offset <clears throat> but uh, in case you're interested in these things you know craftsmanship's awesome it's like a work of art on these uh, jig heads here but in in practice I really was not impressed by them at all and I also have it in a uh, brown version a little bit heavier on a black jig you know same deal just doesn't poke out that much but um yeah guys I just wanna I can't stress enough I mean I see them on Tackle Warehouse. I don't know if they're in stores by you. This is it. I mean, this is it. If you said you fish only one bait, it would be a hard call between the Senko and this, but this is more dynamic. Oh, that's right. That's the other thing I want to talk to you about real quickly. Another reason I like these so, so much is the versatility in them. And a lot of people claim, you know, all sorts of lures are versatile, like a jig. You could, you could jig it, right? You could swim it. Um... You know, you could do the same thing with like a chatterbait, you could let it fall. So just about any bait, you know, is a potential on the fall. But these are kind of a trifecta of different things. When I cast this almost every single time, I just let it fall. I don't I don't start reeling it. I, I find some structure, whether it's pads or edge of a weed bed or even open water. Um, I, I cast it and I just let it go down. What I found is that when you use uh, a one eighth ounce um, or a 1 16th. You can even go lighter, but a 1 8th or 1 16th. No more than that, though. The rate of fall gets this tail to move so well, 
this thing just looks like it's swimming down and it looks freaking alive man it looks alive the way this thing goes down with that weight if you go heavier it's too fast I get so many strikes on the floor uh, probably half of the strikes come on the floor just like a Senko you know but it because it looks like it's alive really alive going down there so then you have you know your choice let it fall and it gets to the bottom once it's on the bottom and sometimes I'll bottom fish it I'll just drag it across slow you know like um like a, what do I use the other thing like a biffle bug you know something like that like you just you want it to keep contact with the bottom I'll lower my rod tip I'll slow down my retrieve and you just bring this thing slow across the bottom you'll have to see for yourself but if you have one of these bring it you know towards the boat and just have a couple feet of light out line out and look at how slow you can reel it and get full action from this tail you, you would think it's impossible you would think I'm definitely going too slow now at this point that thing's not moving uh-uh you can go painfully slow and it's not that it moves but it still moves really well it moves ultra lifelike even at a slow speed so that's part number two you can let it just get them on the fall two cold weather deep water let it hit the bottom drag it across the bottom just swim that little fish right along the bottom stop it twitch it like a little dying fish on the bottom uh, goes without saying, you just fish it at whatever depth you want. You know, count off three seconds and fish it at whatever that would be. Um, I haven't timed this one out yet, but let's just say it's a foot a second. Count off three seconds, fish it at three feet. Count off six seconds, fish it at six feet. So you can fish it basically like a crankbait. I, I actually opt for this so much more this year than a crankbait because I'm tired of getting hung up. And this thing gets to strikes. I can cast it into the thickest timber, the thickest weeds, the thickest anything and I could bring it through. And then when there's an opening, you know, then, then it's swimming and then, you know, just every place I want to fish a crankbait, I'm like, well, why don't I just put this on? Because I have no chance of getting hung up. Another thing I do is I fish it as a jig. I just take it like you see here and I pitch it or cast it straight into timber, straight into, you know, dense branches. Just throw it in there, let it fall down and just fish it exactly like I would a jig. But the difference is if you have like a, you know, a football head jig or whatever, you throw it in there, you, you twitch it a few times, and then, you know, you bring it back in. With this, I throw it in there, you know, I swim it around, I twitch it around, and then as soon as I'm getting it out of the tree, I let it fall just past the branches, so now I'm not I've done the interior of the tree, I've done the thick stuff. Once I, you know, weasel my way out, if I haven't got a strike, bring it right to the edge of those branches, and I would let it go down right by the edges, which, you know, a lot of times that's where I get them. And then if nothing there, fine. Then I just finish swimming it out of the tree. Sometimes there's ones, you know, below the tree. There's ones, you know, staging a couple feet out. They're not going to get it in the thick stuff. And they didn't even jump on it on the very edge. But now I swim it out there, you know, just like a little crankbait, just like a fish. And I get those fish. So trifecta, boom, boom, boom. Three applications. And the whole while, I just don't get hung up. I don't get hung up. And... I'll follow that up with some people might say, well, you know, you, what about hookup ratios? Excellent. Superb, actually. Um, very, very few misses. When this thing gets hit with these wide gap hooks, and I mean, like I said, I've used a bunch of different brands. I don't really see a difference. As long as you have that real wide gap hook, you know, I just, I haven't missed them. You know. So, <laughs> it's just such a dynamic lure. It, it is my jig. It, it is my swim bait, obviously. It's my bottom crawler. Um, it's, in a, in a way, my Senko when I let it fall. And in all those different ways, I've had a lot of success on it. But particularly when I could do so many things in one. Like when I am casting it into the trees, and I work it as a jig. And then just on the outside of the trees. And then between the trees and my boat is a, is a grass patch. And I could work it into the grass patch and let it fall into the holes of the grass patch the whole while weedless. And the last thing is top water. I had an enormous amount of strikes this year, a lot of success. This thing, if you keep your rod tip high, bring it across the surface. You, know, you don't even have to burn it. You don't have to go that fast. As long as you keep a lightweight on here, like keep it like a 1 16th ounce. Remember, just to keep that, you know, keel down, to keep that lateral line where it's supposed to be. Bring it across the surface, and it's a buzz bait. It churns up the water, you get that gurgle, you know, it's a buzzbait. Um, I've cast it into like, you know, onshore with, you know, 
nastiness and just buzz it across the top, making all that commotion, you get your strikes. And then say there'd be like a pocket in all those dense weeds, there'd be a pocket, I bring it across there and then let it fall into that pocket. You just can't do that with a standalone jig. You can't do that with a Senko. I mean, all those other lures, they can do, you know, they can do those things moderately well or they, they excel in some areas. But this lure here, it simply does it all. And it does it better than other swim baits. The slowness at which you can retrieve it, the way that it swims down, just the fluidity and the lifelike action of it. I mean, just, it, it's been such a killer killer lore for me this year. I can't say enough about it. I absolutely can't. And for whatever it's worth, if I had to choose a color, it would be this bluegill flesh. You have a nice sharp lateral line there. You have silver and gold flake as well as a little bit of black. You have, to me it strikes a balance of being, I fish just in clear waters because it's natural enough. It's, it's not a s super dark, you know, color like this or a green pumpkin or like a white. Um, but that lateral line gives it a contrast, and so I have success with it also in stained water as well. And it's just a really dynamic color. There's enough darkness to pierce dark water. There's enough flash to, you know, to reflect in, in sunny conditions. Um, if I were to recommend one color, it would be the bluegill flash as a very dynamic color. I mean, just look at that sharp line there. Very nice. And then uh, I actually just got these as well. These are on back order from... Um, from uh, Land, uh, Land Big Fish, just got these silver shiners, which is basically the same thing, just it's got a um, bottom is straight silver and the top is like an even more aqua blue. And it's got the same pronounced line on the side. Alright everybody, that's it. Um, I won't make any more videos about these, this is my second time doing it. And uh, like I said, I almost feel conflicted, like I, I don't want to go on a tackle warehouse and see these things sold out. Um, but I, I gotta, I'm just not that type of person. I mean, when I have just stupid success with a lure, when, you know, it's, when I just know something's gonna work day in and day out, various bodies of water, temperature, time of year, whatever, I mean, this is it. This is it. So, that's it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks.